Welcome to Noonday Prayer here at St. George's. And we will begin on page 103 in the Book of Common Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let's say together Psalm 119. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from Acts. Uh, this is the moment in the life of the church when deacons are uh, made into an order of the church. I'll read this from chapter 6. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. Uh, it's an interesting passage for a lot of reasons. Um, first of all, of course, that uh, there's this complaint and it's the Hellenists, so these are not Jewish believers who've become Christian. These are uh, Gentile believers, and they're feeling kind of discriminated against. Um, they're not getting the attention they need because they're not getting the food that they need. Uh, this is recognized early on as part of being the church, that if you're in the community of faith, uh, you would receive not only preaching kind of food, but food food. And so there's a discussion, and it's sort of determined that the apostles' real gifting, uh, having known Jesus himself in the flesh, seen his resurrection, that they had a particular call and priority in preaching, teaching the word. But they knew that they also needed to exercise good judgment in finding leaders who would attend to the physical needs of the members of the church. And so this meeting is held. Uh, there's a discernment. Um, it said men in good standing, but we understand that there were women who served as deacons as well in the church. Um, and then, of course, we hear that name we recognize, Stephen being one of those chosen. It's interesting uh, that he was chosen as a deacon because what happens very quickly after is uh, Stephen ends up giving one of the all-time best sermons ever. So. Uh, deacons aren't just good at waiting tables. Clearly, they had a powerful witness to the gospel as well, Stephen being the first martyr of the faith. But the organization of the church, how we decided that there were priests and there were deacons, and then, of course, we have that other uh, office of um, bishop. 
the language around the Episcopal Church that describes some of the discussions that we've had about the importance of these different uh, orders of people, lay, bishop, deacon, priest, uh, some of the conversation is uh, framed by the phrase um, essay, pro bene, and pro plane. What is it that really just is essential to being the church? What is the essay, the verb to be in Latin? The absolute essential, uncontested, if it isn't this, it's not the church. And then what are those elements that they may not be essential, but actually they're good for the church? What are, what are the things that, and the, this ordering of, well, it's, it's good to have bishops in the church. Maybe it's not essential, but it is good because it is an ordering principle that makes the life of the church function well. And then plene, the fullness of the church, Maybe it's not essential, maybe it's not even the things that are really good, but it's the thing that expresses the fullness of the church. Maybe that pertains to uh, relationships with other denominations. Maybe that refers to the beauty of the church uh, building itself, for the fullness of the church, for the full expression of the church. So just a time to reflect on uh, these different orders that we inhabit uh, in our church, uh, you reflecting on your own order in the church. What is your role in the church that is essential to the church being uh, the body of Christ? And how is God calling you in that order, in your vocation, in that very place, uh, as a deacon, as a priest, as a bishop, as a lay person, an intercessor? Uh, how is it that you are filling out the essence, the goodness, and the fullness of the Church of God? We continue on page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Lord, we lift up particularly today parishioners for their physical health, Lord God, for their spiritual encouragement. Alan, Stephanie, Adeline, Stafford, Barrett, John, Mary, Jack, Eric, Ray, Alex, Livy, Abby, and Pam. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved. For your tender mercy's sake. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>